Finding a business to run in Ghana can seem like such a complicated process. This lovely lady you see in this video has found an unconventional way of making really, really good amounts of money by running this business. Let's get to know her a little bit in this video and find out exactly what she does to make her living. So maintaining a form of income once you live in Ghana is an important aspect of the whole move to Ghana. In this video, we're going to speak to a lovely lady who has established this amazing dessert place here in Accra, Ghana. We're going to get to know her a little bit, find out how she started, find out how the whole thing came about, get to know the nitty gritty of the challenges, what it costed to start and everything in between. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. Let's go and speak to her. Hi Rhoda. Hi Jasmine. Thanks for being on my channel. That's fine. Thank you so much for having <laughs> That's us. That's all right. That's all so right. you moved from Australia to Ghana and this is what you've managed to come up with. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your journey? When did you move to Ghana and, and why did you choose to move to Ghana? Okay, so the journey was in two parts. I first of all moved to Ghana 2013 and mm -hmm. returned back to Australia 2018 okay. and then moved back 2021. Okay. So it has been two different transitions. Right, to, right. Yeah. Why did you return in the beginning? I returned to go back to school. Okay. I wanted like um, a different career opportunity mm. so I was like look you know what let me just move back to Australia and then go back to school so I came back to do my master's and worked a little bit and then returned back wow. 2021. Okay what did you study? I went to do my postgraduate diploma in project management and then master's in business administration. Oh yeah. okay 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 that makes sense. Yeah. So what led up to you making that decision to move to Ghana in the first place? Um look I love Australia. Everybody knows I love Australia, but it got to a point where I was like, I'm done. I just want new opportunities, mm. different things. And also, I grew up in Ghana. Mm. So when I came to Australia, I was 17, turning 18. Mm. So I had friends already here. Mm. I felt my life, half of my life was already built in Ghana. Mm. So there was this, in, like, this thing in me that always wanted me to move back to Ghana. Yeah. And I did, and I haven't regretted at all. Awesome. Well, did you do any other businesses before doing this, this particular one we're in today? Yes. So um, this particular one started recently. So when yeah. I came back, to initially 2013, 2014, mm. my mom has a shop in Accra, Makola. So okay. I was just helping her in and out with business. Okay. And then when I returned back, to Australia and then I came back 2021 I temporarily worked for an oil and gas company okay. in Ghana okay. I think almost five to six months and then I started this business as well so mm. so what was that experience like for you working for your mom and then working for the oil and gas business because that that was like that wasn't like an entrepreneurial role it was mm -hmm. more like you're doing a regular job for somebody else mm -hmm. what was that experience like i know being in ghana it's a little bit different it's very different because working in australia and then working in ghana is two different things but look i actually loved working in ghana okay um i think the culture the fact that you could speak to you whenever <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay and then you could relate to the people because you feel like they are your own they yeah. are all Ghanaians. yeah Whereas okay. in Australia, there's different culture. Though I love like, you know, learning about different cultures, mm. but like this felt like, oh, this is home. You mm. could feel free. You could, you know, connect with the staff. Yeah. And I've made lots of friends because I did okay. work in Ghana okay. and picked one or few cultural differences when mm. it comes to running a business or being in a leadership role right. in a company as well. What was your role well. with that company? Project manager. Oh, okay, okay. How long were you there for? About five to six months. Right, so it was right after the project um, manager position that you left and went back to uh, Sydney, is that right? So it was more of after I came back from Sydney, mm -hmm. I had the position a month after. Okay. So when I came, I was already into projects because okay. when I was in Australia doing the project management course mm -hmm. and the masters, I had a, a job in Australia in a gas company as oh, well. Okay. So when I came, I already had experience. Mm. So it was easier for me to 
get that role mm. and then operate in that role as mm. well. Yeah. Mm. So how come you only did that for six months? Was was there a reason why you left that? Yes, there was a reason. I, I felt like I needed, there was this push that wanted more and more and more every day. Mm. And working in the project field in Australia for two years and then coming here for six months, I just wanted to learn the Ghanaian culture mm. as well. But after a while, I was like, you know what? I really want to do something for myself. Mm. How can I impact? I'm mm. not fulfilled. I was very happy, but mm. I wasn't fulfilled. Mm. So I was like, there is more I could do. Mm. So what, how can I do something? How can I place an impact? Because mm -hmm. I remember when I used to work for the oil lingers, they used to pay me 8,000 mm. cents a month. Mm -hmm. For Ghanaian standard, it's, it's good high, money. Yeah. Extremely mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for that amount, even that time, for Ghana, 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 Ghana. And at that time, not dollar in your state. So it was like over thousand dollars a month. A month. So for Ghanaian standard, it was like, hey, you get good pay, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. why are you quitting your job? Mm -hmm. But I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. But your report is mm -hmm. that. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. you have to send a report. Mm -hmm. Then you have to send a report. 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 Once you left the project manager role with the oil mm -hmm. and gas company, mm -hmm. what was the next thing that happened for you? Yeah, I was still transitioning onto what I could do, what do I have to do. So I started a consultancy. Right. And it's still running. Mm -hmm. Um, that we provided HR services for um, oil and gas company, construction oh, company, right. etc. Okay. While I was like still waiting on what properly I could do as well. So, so how long did you do that for? I'm still doing it. Oh, you're still doing that. In addition to this <laughs> yes. as well. Wow, you're a busy woman. <laughs> okay. So how long has that run for now, the HR business? I would say about a year now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how long ago did you start this one we're in right now today? I would say almost a year. Okay, so it all almost started around, around the, the same, same time. time. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so I mean, Preman Foods, like, <laughs> this is such an interesting <laughs> name. Like, I know you're Preman, like, oh, I'm just. <laughs> You know, I actually don't understand the term Preman. Yeah. I use it all the time, but yeah. I don't understand it. Like, I associate it with like somebody who likes to be dressed up. Yeah. But I don't know if that's what it actually is. Is that what it means? Um, so people say preman or preman, depending however you would like to mention it. Okay. But this would not be a traditional name I would have given to a popcorn brand. Yeah. To be honest okay, with you. <laughs> but this name was given to me in a dream, so I could oh. not change it. I just couldn't change it. I oh. needed to use it. To just use yeah. it. Wow. So wow. did that happen after you thought about the idea of doing the popcorn, or did did the name come to you before? you started the whole thing before the whole idea of doing popcorn no the whole popcorn idea i also have no idea okay. so i remember somewhere last year in may mm -hmm. i had a dream okay and then in the dream i had this tall man walk me through the streets of la Paz and everybody knows me that i have no idea when it comes to suburbs in mm -hmm. accra i don't know la paz mm -hmm. and it was like oh um, you just have to do stuff relating to corn. So I, in the dream, I thought it was banku or kinky. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or maybe something to do with cooking mm. or anything. And he's like, no, popcorn. And you have to call it Prima popcorn. Wow. So I got up and I wrote the dream down on my phone. It was May 21st. Mm. And then I'm like, me, a whole me. I went all the way to Australia to do my master's, to, you know, build my yeah. career. And... Um, popcorn like how like how do I do it mm. so I trash it away and it kept coming back mm. whenever I'm driving and I get to um, traffic and I see these women carrying popcorn mm -hmm. I would remember it, yeah. I'm like what am I doing let me just you know start watching YouTube videos mm. about popcorn so I did and still I didn't start mm. so I told one or two people around me then and they were like okay you know what just start on a small scale and test the market mm. and see and this is very interesting because I don't know where they sell the corn. Mm. I know oil and sugar where they sell, mm. but like the popcorn corn, mm -hmm. like the American corn, mm. I don't know where mm. they sell it. So I had to like ask so many people yeah. to get suppliers, to even know the ingredients. I, and I didn't even think that I would end up doing such a business. So the idea wasn't even there to yeah. start off with. Yeah. Wow, that is, I'm so blown away. I think sometimes, you know, 
you're just blessed with something, you yeah. know, without yeah. you even, like you have no idea how it falls on your lap, you know, it yeah. just happens and you just have to take it and run with yeah. it. And I think that's exactly what you've done here. So, <laughs> so once you had this dream and then you decided to pursue this whole um, career and um, making popcorn yeah. and dessert and that type of thing, mm -hmm. What was, the next, what was the initial stages like? What did you have to do in the beginning to get this started? Okay, so I would say this just recently happened, but I, I moved back a little bit. Okay. Um, when it started, I started off in schools. Okay. So that was like my first pilot program. So mm -hmm. I started off with one school and then you grew to two, mm -hmm. it went to four. Okay. So I had workers selling the popcorn every single day in at these the school. At the school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then that was when I was testing the market to mm -hmm. see and to get the numbers. So that was when I did a little bit on re of research mm -hmm. on my own mm -hmm. regarding popcorn market mm -hmm. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So I went on Google, I went on Instagram to see other vendors that do popcorn mm -hmm. and I realized that there was a big and a huge gap mm. so there was room for growth and okay. improvement yeah. so that was when I was like I'll be different and do things differently mm. hence the shop mm. so how did you find schools that will let you sell there it was difficult because anybody that lives in Ghana know that when it comes to schools they won't let you sell inside mm. the schools mm. because the schools have packages inclusive right. food right so they give the kids um, food every single mm. day including mm. snacks right so they won't let you set up your popcorn machine and sell but by the grace of God I approached the first school which is very dear to my heart and she was a very old lady. Mm. She just looked at me and said, you know what, I'll give you a trial. Oh, just you. come, let me test you and see how you people operate mm. and then I will give you a go. Mm. And that's exactly what she did. And within a month or two, we saw a massive growth that's and the kids cool. were very, very <laughs> interested with the product. Mm. We started getting different events because we were in the school. Cool, so the yeah. parents would approach mm. us for their kids' parties yeah, right. and events. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. was a very good feedback we had mm. from the school as mm -hmm. well. So when you sell in the schools, were you, did, the, did you pay the school anything to be there? Or were they, what was the agreement there? Did you? So with the first anything? school, with mm. the old lady, she charged me nothing. Okay. She's like, just come and set up by mm. the grace of God. Mm. I decided to offer her something, but she wouldn't even take That's it. So the other schools, they did, okay. but it wasn't a lot. It okay. was like a little token to just, you know, clean, get the cleaners to clean the mess the kids right. have created. Yeah, sure. yeah. So is that something you still do at the moment? Yes. You still go to schools yes. to sell? Okay. Yes, okay. Yeah. So aside from schools, where else do you go? What else, where else do you sell? And aside from this place, where are Events. Today? Okay. So my one of our biggest target markets is events literally every weekend. Mm -hmm. There is no weekend by the grace of God that we don't have um, you know, a booked appointment for us to be at weddings, kids parties, corporate events, mm. etc. Awesome. So the events is and then at the moment we are starting West Hills Mall okay. from the first of December. So everybody awesome. please pass by and support <laughs> and also our packaged ones in the shops as well. Oh, okay, <laughs> wow. When the millions come, remember me, Ruda. <laughs> How you des describe Preman Foods? What, what, what's the brand? Okay, so Preman Foods represents everything about me, everything, mm -hmm. every single value that I place. Mm -hmm. This means a lot to me. So saying, uh, asking that question is a bit emotional for me because, you know, we have a motto, that, uh, a vision about this business that says that you feel a passion through your first bite mm -hmm. and we still stand by it. Mm. Once you try our popcorn, mm. you realize that there's a whole lot <laughs> plays into getting that flavor for mm. you. So, you know, Premai Foods, it's not just Premai Foods, but it is not also a movement, but it's a lifestyle. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to snacks. Okay, yeah. so so the foods represent snacks. So at the moment, it's just popcorn you're putting out there, but there's going to be more to come, yes, is that right? That's correct. Okay. At the moment, it's popcorn and packaged popcorn candy. So right oh. now in Ghana, there isn't a packed one. When you go to abroad, like Australia, yeah. the UK or US, mm -hmm. there is packed um, cotton candy mm. whereby you can eat it, but in mm, Ghana there isn't. Yeah. So I do that as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So when it came to sourcing, because in the beginning you said about how you've never done anything to do with popcorn, you mm. didn't even know where to find the popcorn and the mm. sugar and all those type of things. What did you do to make things easier in that aspect? How did you end up finding where to source your products to make mm. these things? Okay, 
So it's just engaging, and I called a couple of people still. We couldn't get supplies. So what you normally get is they'll show you, oh, go to the market, go to Provisions Lane, you get sugar. But right. the prices they are giving you is not actual the actual warehouse prices. Right. So I was just hoping and praying that one day I'll get the direct source. Mm. And I had a conversation with a friend of mine, and then she said, oh, my mom used to sell popcorn when we were little. And I remember my mom used to get the product from this warehouse in industrial area, not right. Kaneshi. So I'd ask my mom. And then I spoke to her mom, and her mom was like, oh, that was like 20 years ago. I'll pick me up, I'll take you there. Oh, okay. So I picked her up, and she took me to the warehouse, and I was blown away. It has everything, like in bulk quantity, mm. and it's cheaper. So, so what would you say the journey has been like so far? Like, have you had any major challenges throughout the time that you've, you know, started all the way up until now? Yes, so when it comes to popcorn, Ghanaians really look down on the price. Mm. So they'll be like, oh, popcorn, hey, bro, mm. hey, bro, why are you charging so much for mm. this? You know, when parents engage us for kids' parties and then I give them a quotation, they are like, oh, popcorn, keke, ananiboye de insano. They don't realize that, you know, you are bringing workers, mm. the, the sort of product I mm -hmm. use to make my popcorn mm -hmm. is not ordinary like the ones yeah. that you see in traffic. Yeah, 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 and yeah. it's a brand yeah. I'm building. That's so right. I can't just do things ordinarily like That's how right. a normal That's Ghanaian right. sells. And generally popcorn. the Ghanaian ones is sugar and salt. salt. That's it. There's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so um, that has been one challenge. But like I'm changing the face now. They are beginning to understand right. that there is you know, it's a snack, so yeah. we need to respect the brand and respect what they do as mm. well. So that's one. Two is staffing. Yes, yeah, but I'm working through it. It's um, it's a daily process. Yeah. And I offer training and development, but at a point, you get to a point and you are like, no, it's not working. I let no, them go. Yeah. yeah. But it's a big, 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 big yeah. issue. Lots of people facing Ghana. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How many people do you employ at the moment? Hmm. At the moment, I have 11. Okay. Yeah, 11. that's that's a decent number to run. That's not easy at all. Yeah. Mm. Setting up the place wasn't easy. Mm. Sometimes you are trying to project your idea to these branding people mm. and they knock they it down. Yeah. yeah. And also people really realizing that this is a different phase of popcorn. It's mm. not like the normal popcorn. So it's just a process. Mm. It's, it's okay. Mm. Um, I see them as good challenges mm -hmm. which I can overcome so mm -hmm. it's it's completely fine. Okay, yeah. okay. How did you find this location to have your show? It's a very good question. <laughs> very, very difficult. Yeah. I contacted so many different agents and the ones that they kept showing me I didn't like it because mm. I already knew what I wanted. Mm. So it's like, oh, I wish somebody could just read my mind. Mm. And they were a lot more expensive as well mm. in certain areas. And I was very specific. There were certain areas I didn't like. Okay. I didn't want to start off there. So, but these were the areas they were like pushing me to um, rent a place and start the business. And they were expensive for mm. a startup business right. like this. So I wanted to choose. What areas were those? Usu, Laboni, mm. Cantumens, right. East Ligon. Okay, yeah. yeah, those places are very expensive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but I wanted like a good area but affordable. Of course, yeah. And this is fairly like really good as well. Okay, so. <laughs> because this is Jowulu, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Jowulu. Do you mind me asking what do you pay a month here? Okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Contact Jasmine and Jasmine will tell you. Yes. Jasmine will tell you, but I wouldn't put that out there. Okay. But it's it's within budget, I yeah. would say. But okay. this is Jowulu, close to um, airport residential. So right. it's like I'm on the border of Jowulu and airport, airport residential. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is my little office. It's very, very cute. I really like Thank it. Thank you, Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> so now we'll cast her sometimes for to meet her, my dear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when we have orders. Um, thousand pieces, five hundred pieces. Mm. I have to sleep here. Make sure it's ready. Supervised. Yeah. yeah. So this is like working slash home, I'm basically. <laughs> well, single room, chamber, and hall. No, but you've done so well. Like so Thank long you. as it's progressing, I think it's Thank you. great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You do it cheap. <laughs> so would you say when it comes to selling consumables, would you say say you know it does a lot of it's a lot of um, what's the word? It's labor intensive mm -hmm. because you know there's a lot of making stuff. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's worth it in terms of profits? Yes, it's yeah. worth it. Okay. Because look, these are sold in large quantities. Mm. You know, 
and um, it cuts across so the business as I told you before comes in different dimensions mm. so we have the school one which the profit margins are in a lot okay for the, school see, for the school yeah. ones I just do it out of passion mm -hmm. and um, also making sure that the kids are, are happy and mm -hmm. getting our product mm. so the event space the packaging and then also the shop that's where we make our profit so I just blend mismatch okay so it's not one particular direction yeah. so there are some areas in the businesses where the profit will be higher mm. than some areas and mm. even with the event there are some events that I make so much profit mm. and there are some I'm but not making a lot but I don't make a loss I cut even in right. some like you know get, you get parents calling you there like pre man for konana me pe omwana me pe so mo ba me so bisika you see she's kind of so never ye bibi mami so you know instances like that I'm mm. going there not to get a loss mm. but at the end of the day not to make profit as well i'm just doing it as exactly well. yeah. You don't mean for any premium foods then. I'm going to bring premium foods. Eh, premium foods. Eh, premium. Eh, premium. Mama no one. Yeah, you're from mama. I'm telling you. And I'm like, I beg when the kids are now calling me, eh, queen of popcorn on the streets, and I'm like, eh, the pamacho. Yeah, but this is great. You know, they're associating it with you. You know, and that's how the brand is established. You know, years to come, we'll be like popcorn. Everyone thinks about it. Yes, I just want to be the face of popcorn. That's Ghana, awesome. and that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, so if anybody is interested in starting something to do with consumables, like making something to sell in terms of food, and they want to do that in Ghana, maybe they've come from the diaspora just like yourself and me, what advice would you have for them? What, what things do they need to do to make sure the transition is as smooth as possible and the business settles in well? First of all, when it's consumables, mm. anything to do with food or drugs or cosmetics, mm. I get them to do their investigation mm. because one, you need an FDA approval. Mm. You need Ghana, Ghana Standard Authority, mm. your taxes, obviously business registration, mm. you know, and all sorts of things. And all these things take time. It is a process. Yeah. So first, I would say that they need to identify their market. Every business in Ghana have a target market. Mm. It's not like the diaspora whereby you could even sit on the internet and find information and mm. it's giving it mm, to mm, you. Mm, mm, mm. Here, there isn't anything of mm, that sort. So mm. you need to come and dirty yourself in the system. To learn how we do business in Ghana, because trust me, is different. Mm, mm. How we relate to our customers is totally different. Mm, mm. Some body language in Ghana is... <laughs> Is, is taken as being rude, mm. you know, especially when dealing with customers. Sometimes, for example, I went to do an event in a customer's house and I greeted her. I was minding my business, getting on with setup, and she got offended. She's like, oh, you didn't engage me enough, but I thought privacy, I mean, yeah. your space. So things are a little bit different. Mm. They want you to be engaging, talking, talking, talking. Mm. That's what they like. They want to be your friend yeah. tomorrow because right. you came to their house today. today. Yeah, so enough. things are different. Whereas in Australia, where the fact that you are my client doesn't mean you are my We're friend. friend. No. Yeah. So the person needs to come to Ghana, study the system, know how things are structured Ghana. at least for a month mm. and associate themselves with a particular brand mm. be sure i would always say be really really sure because running a business in ghana just me you can mm. attest to it yeah. it is not a no, joke no, it really you isn't. need grace for yeah, what you do you do need and determination to. you yeah. need to be sure that this is what you want yeah. and you're willing to be in it for the long haul because it's not something that's going to take off in like six months and no. you're making a million like no. yeah it doesn't really work no. like that yeah it doesn't work like that do you have do you have a mentor like how do you think you learned all these things did you just learn it on the job or did you learn from someone or i would say my mentor would be my mom okay and then my dad okay. i would say my parents per yeah. se, because my mom grew up in a business um family mm. um and my dad was a businessman in Ghana before he moved to Australia as right, well. Right. So I think it came natural and then also the zeal. I have always been passionate about everything that I want to do, mm. I've always wanted to do. So I think that it is from my mom and dad and also inspiration from life and who I am as yeah. well, Rhoda as yeah. well. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Um, if you guys want to check out Rhoda, Rhoda, where can they find you? So they can put our names on Uber, mm. I mean boats, um, and then Google Maps yep. and type Premai Foods, mm. it will bring you right here. Mm -hmm. We are also on Instagram, Premai Foods. My number is there, reach out to me.
Mm. <laughs> this is good. The caramel, oh my god. Yeah, goodness. it's people's mm. favorite. So oh, our okay. flavors are not just these. Mm. We have on a daily basis about eight flavors. Right. So these ones plus the vanilla, butter, cinnamon, um, and then garlic salt. Right. People Depending love garlic salt. Yeah. 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 Welcome to our uh, mini popcorn factory. Where, where did you get your machine? Oh, I imported the machine from oh, China. From China, so China. It's, okay. It's commercial um, popcorn, popcorn machine. Okay, okay. That was imported. That can do a capacity between seven to ten kilos at a time oh, within right. three minutes. Oh, okay. Yes. So the machine is on, and then so firstly we pour our oil. So we have a special oil for popcorn. Okay. That's why I always taste different, but I'm not going to give that information. So somebody <laughs> steals my yeah, idea. Of course, no. And yeah. then we put our sugar in. And then our glucose out. And then we see it take about three minutes. Okay. To okay. So once we do the popcorn, it cools, but we get to that process. So this is our packaging station. Okay. So as I said before, we do package popcorn right. and sell it to um, the stores as well. So this is the nitrogen that keeps the products. And these are the machines that we use for events. So when you call okay. us for an event and you want a live popcorn made, we take you this. these machines. Exactly. And right. The warehouse is very well organized. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are trying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're doing a good job. And he's the one that went to the store. Remember, it's only the other people living in that one. This has two years. Okay. Yeah. We have the cooling the agents yeah. here. And it sees it. And the debris. Sometimes yeah. we have like these corn debris right. underneath us. So warm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm buying a big bag and taking it with me. <laughs> you guys, this has been such a lovely conversation. So inspiring what you're doing, Rina. Like, I, yeah, I don't know how you've done it, but you've really come far, and I really appreciate you being on the channel. Thank you so much as well, Jasmine, for visiting us. And, That's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. I was nervous, guys. I was really nervous. I'm not used to it. <laughs> I know, this whole video thing, like, I think I underestimate how hard it is because yeah. it's just natural. Same way, yeah. I can't make popcorn. But so I you guys, make sure you check out Rosa uh, of Preman Foods. All the information will be in the description box as well as on the screen. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you want to see more business-related content, make sure you give me a thumbs up because that's the only way I'm going to know that you want to see more of these type of videos. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow your bliss so now life is short. <laughs> Follow your bliss. <laughs> na <nupai> day. Day. <laughs> Follow your bliss. <laughs> na yeah, yeah. And follow your bliss. <laughs> na Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.